In this video, I'm going to demonstrate working with the attribute table in QGIS. I'm using version 3.4. If you're using a newer version, it might be a little bit different, but uh, we'll just go with this. Uh, it should be pretty similar in concept. So I have a map here of Washington State. I've added a few vector layers. Um, I've got lakes, urban areas, highways, and I also have counties. I'm going to be focusing on the counties layer in this video. And uh, we can see the counties on the map here, uh, the boundaries of the 39 different ones. And if we want to learn more about those, we can open the attribute table of the counties layer. Uh, now I've added this as a shape file here, and I can right click the layer and choose open attribute table to see the table. Now I'm going to move the table over here in the corner so we can get a view of the map at the same time as we work with it. And uh, I'll probably pan the map over here just to uh, set things up so that we can see everything. Um, so the table and the map are interactive. They're linked to each other. And let's first take a look at some of the main attributes we have here. Uh, we have a column called name, which holds obviously the name of the county. Um, and we also have an ID number. Typically these tables will you have, have a unique identifying number or ID for each feature just to keep them, so the software can keep them separate. Um, we also have a to POP10 field here. This is the total population of the county in 2010 as of the census in that year. Also population density, I'm going to assume this is people per square mile, but I might want to check uh, the information that comes with the data set called the metadata uh, to verify that if I were going to use this in a report. Um, now if I uh, click a row here, uh, each row represents a single county, and so I've clicked a row for Ferry County, and notice how this linkage appears where uh, the the county is now highlighted in the map, so uh, this is county is selected. Uh, if I want to remove that highlight, there's a little button here to deselect. Uh, you can also see that up here in the top in the main uh, menu. And then uh, it works in the reverse way as well, so I could click something on the map. First I have to choose this select button, and um, I lost my attribute table here, but if I click this feature, and I bring the table back up and scroll down, you can see the Okanagan County is selected here. Um, so we can interact between the table and the map, which can be very useful. For example, uh, let's say I want to find the five uh, most populated counties. So I'll clear the selection. And any column uh, can be sorted just by clicking on the column name. So I'm going to click this, and it's sorted from lowest to highest. Uh, if I click it again, it's going to sort from highest to lowest. And so scrolling up to the top, we can see that King County uh, by far has the most people, over uh, a million, almost two million. And if I want to see the five most populated counties, I can just uh, highlight them like this. Uh, I just dragged across the side here, uh, and that highlighted uh, the five most populous counties. Um, by the, in the same way, I could sort the other way and find the five least populated counties. Notice how the geography of these changes. Uh, most of these are in eastern Washington. So we can explore the data in this way and learn a little bit more about it using the attribute table. And notice that um, we could have many, many columns in this table. And for a lot of spatial data sets, most of the data is actually contained in the attribute table, not the geometries. And so you don't want to miss the, the very rich attributes that might be behind the data set uh, that could help you learn things.